Hey everyone, this is Music Tech Help Guy, and welcome to part 52 of my ultimate guide to Logic Pro. In the previous video, we looked at all of the main features in the Arpeggiator MIDI Effects plugin in Logic, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate all of the latch modes and live playback and recording features in the Arpeggiator. So if you haven't watched part 51 yet, or you're not already familiar with the Arpeggiator, I highly recommend you go back and watch part 51 before jumping into this video. Before I get into the tutorial though, I wanna quickly tell you about the sponsor of this video, Boombox. If you're a producer or mixing engineer, and you're looking for a fresh new way to collaborate with and collect feedback from your clients, look no further than boombox.io. Boombox allows you to upload your tracks and invite your collaborators and clients to a project who can then leave time-stamped production notes and mixing feedback on the tracks. Once you've made revisions, you can upload new versions of the track to the project. As a mixing engineer, Boombox helps me easily collect feedback from my mixing clients and turn around quick mixing revisions. But don't take my word for it, try it out for yourself. Head over to boombox.io and sign up today to get four gigabytes of free storage. Okay, so just like in the previous video, I'm using just a drum loop and I'm using the default patch in Retro Synth to start. And because I'm demonstrating live playback techniques, I'm actually gonna be playing my MIDI controller throughout the video rather than relying on a pre-recorded MIDI region. And many of the features I'm gonna show you how to do in this video are meant for live input with a MIDI controller. Okay, so I just have the default setting pulled up in the arpeggiator. Let's talk about latch mode. So you can turn latch mode on and off here. This allows you to play in chords and the arpeggiator will latch on to those chords and hold them until you play another chord or turn the playback off in the arpeggiator. This playback button also needs to be on for this to work. So I'm gonna set this to on, I'm gonna turn on latch and then I'm going to put this in reset mode. And what reset mode means is that the notes in the pattern will change, will clear every single time you play a new chord. So I'm just gonna arm the track and I'm gonna play a chord on my MIDI controller and watch what happens. So you can see that it's continuing to hold the chord and arpeggiate the chord even though I'm not pressing and holding the keys. Now if I switch to another chord, So it'll continue to arpeggiate those chords and latch onto those chords until I stop the playback. Now, as you enter in chords, it'll still remember these here in the live pattern editor. And if I turn this back on again, it'll start right back up where you left off. So if you need to clear that pattern and start over, you can click the clear button here. Now, before I go through all of the different latch modes, I wanna show you two different ways to record your latched arpeggios into your project. So let's say that you're just trying to come up with arpeggios one by one, like chord by chord. So I'm gonna use latch mode and reset. I'm gonna turn on playback and latch mode will also follow all of these other controls down here in the note order section. So if I want maybe 30 second notes, maybe I wanna go up and down, second variation, maybe two octaves, I can totally do that. Now, one way to do this is you can turn on your record MIDI to track here, and then just hit R to record, and then play in the chord where you want it to come in at. and then just stop playback in the arpeggiator. And then you can also just stop playback with the space bar. And because we use that record MIDI to track function, it's recorded that entire arpeggio into a new MIDI region. 
However, there's a bit easier way to do this that doesn't require you to actually play in real time. So I'm going to click here. I'm going to turn off my record MIDI function. Let's open up the arpeggiator real quick. And let's go through those chords again. I'm just going to turn on the playback. You can clear if you need to clear. And I'm just going to play in that first chord again. That was an A minor 7 chord. Stop the playback. And these two icons here next to the playback button, these are not just icons. You can actually drag and drop MIDI from these. So if I drag the first one into the tracks area, what it does is it imports just the raw MIDI, basically the MIDI input. So just the chord that I played. And if I drag the second one, this actually drags in one sort of cycle of that arpeggiation. So what I can do is I can just loop this up to where I want the loop to end. And then I can play in another chord. So once again, I can just clear, turn on playback, and play the next chord. Then I can just drag that chord in, loop that out, and then just continue the process until you get all of the chords in that you want in your recording. Now, when you work this way, you can actually bypass the arpeggiator or you can turn off playback in the arpeggiator while you're not using it because there's no need to arpeggiate the arpeggios. So just be careful about that. Now, we're going to come back to these drag and drop features with the as played mode at the end of this video. It's another really cool way to get some uh, really creative and interesting arpeggios into your project without having to play them in manually. So next, let's go through all of the latch modes. We've already talked about reset mode. So let's move on to transpose. What transpose does is it allows you to transpose an entire arpeggio up or down by just playing one key on your keyboard. So for example, if I play that A minor 7 chord again, and I turn on the playback here, If I want to transpose this down or up, I don't need to play the entire chord again. I can just play another root note. So if I play E, for example, now it shifts down. It transposes the entire chord down to E minor 7. And now we're in F minor 7. C minor 7. And then back to A minor 7. Now, the only thing that's tricky about this is it's only transposing the chord up or down. So it's shifting the chord up or down in parallel. So when you're trying to work, you know, within a chord progression, within a composition and stay in key, you want to move your chords diatonically. So, for example, if I wanted to go A, E, F, G, it would be A minor 7, E minor 7, F major 7, and then G7. So I've got three different qualities of chord. So when you're using transpose mode, if you need to change the quality of the chord, you can simply just play in the full chord. So let's clear that pattern. Let's try that again. I'm going to play A minor 7. I'm just going to press E to trigger an E minor 7. Then I'm going to play the entire F major 7 chord, and then I'll play G7. So anytime you want to transpose the same chord quality up or down, it only requires a single note press rather than having to restate the whole chord. The next latch mode is gated transpose. Gated transpose is just like transpose, but when you release the keys on your MIDI controller, the chords are not held, so they're not really latched onto, but you can still play a single note to transpose the chord up or down. So let me just clear this, and let's play in a new chord. So you can see, as soon as I let go of the keys, it stops playback. But it does remember that I played it in A minor 7. So if I play another note here, 
it's going to jump down to E minor 7. And then the same thing will happen just like it happened with the transpose mode. You can play single notes up or down the keyboard, and it'll remember the previous chord quality. I don't really find this mode very helpful, but it's there if you need it. Next up is add mode. Add mode is interesting because it allows you to add to your existing pattern. So for example, if I start with E minor, then I can slowly add extra notes one by one, and you'll see those extra notes show up here in the pattern editor. Now, if I want to delete a step in the pattern, I can click the delete last button here. So now I'm back to five steps, four steps, and then three steps. Add mode's another one that's really great when using the drag and drop MIDI features. If you're adding notes and removing notes and coming up with arpeggiated sequences on the fly. Now, add mode in a live setting, if you're trying to shift chords around, is not really that useful unless you're using a sustain pedal, because you can actually pair your sustain pedal to the latch button here. By default, if you go to the controller tab, you'll see that the sustain pedal is automatically paired to latch. So what this means is if you have a sustain pedal like this, when you press the sustain pedal, when you hold it down, it's going to turn on latch mode, and when you release, it's gonna turn off latch mode. Now, if you wanna permanently turn it back on again, you can always click on it, but having a sustain pedal gives you a way to remotely turn latch on or off. So what you could do is you could hold down latch with your foot and then state a chord. I just need to remember to turn on playback here. Then I can add to the chord. Now to switch to another chord, I'm going to have to play that chord and really quickly lift up the sustain pedal to turn off latch and then play the next chord. And now I can add to that chord. Let me jump to another chord. So that's add mode. It can be really helpful if you're trying to use the arpeggiator in live performance and you're trying to play different chords and then add to your existing arpeggiation. But again, in the context of like making a studio recording, it's I don't find it that helpful, but it's there if you need it. And by the way, I just want to mention that using the sustain pedal to turn latch on or off will work with any of the latch modes, not just add mode. There's also add temporarily. This works exactly the same way, but any added notes have to be held down. So when you release an added note, that note's gonna go away. So if I have latch mode on, I can play my first chord. And then I can add to that. But notice when I release the key, the step goes away. If I release these, those steps go away. So that's add temporarily. Again, I don't find it that useful, but it could be useful for live performance if that's what you're trying to use this for. The last mode is through mode. This is kind of like add mode, except you're not adding notes. You're just passing some notes through the arpeggiator. So basically the first chord that you play is gonna be latched onto, and then any additional notes are uh, just gonna be sent through the arpeggiator. So this is helpful if you wanna start off with a bass line or a chord progression, and then you wanna play a melody on top of it. So maybe I'll come down to like 16th notes here. Maybe I'll drop the octave down, and I'll start off with like a really basic bass line. So now what I can do is maybe bring my octave range up. 
and all notes I play in at this point are just going to be played through the arpeggiator. They're going to pass through the arpeggiator without being affected. Once again, not very useful in, for me personally for like studio production and composing, but can be very helpful if you're trying to use the arpeggiator in live performance. Most of the time I find myself using reset or transpose mode or add mode in the case of using the as played mode, which we're going to get to in just a bit here. Now, one thing I want to show you with the transpose mode that's pretty helpful is you can actually use the keyboard to scale quantize your arpeggios. So remember what I said before is if you use transpose mode and you just play one note at a time to shift the arpeggio up or down the keyboard, it's just shifting it in parallel. It's not paying attention to what key you're in. But if I set a key, like if I say, okay, we're in A minor, so I'll set this to A natural minor, and I start by playing a chord like A minor seven, Normally, if I were to play this F here, this would shift that entire A minor seven chord down and I would get an F minor seven. But now that I have the keyboard kind of scale quantizing to the key of A minor, when I play F, it's actually going to transpose certain notes to keep the arpeggio in the key of A minor. Now, one thing I will say here is that the scale quantize feature in Logic, whether it be in the arpeggiator or in the piano roll editor, doesn't really do a very good job of converting minor chords to major chords, because what it's doing here is it's actually lowering the third of some of these minor chords down to a second rather than raising them up to a major third. So that's just something to keep in mind as you use this feature. Okay, so one last thing I want to demonstrate is the as played mode. Now I did demonstrate this a bit in the previous video. I just demonstrated the basics of it. And what this does is it allows you to play in your pattern note by note. And this works best when you have this silent capture feature turned on. So you have to open up this little bottom panel, turn on silent capture. What this is gonna do is it's automatically going to turn on latch and it's also going to put you in add mode. And you'll also see that the play button is now flashing. So what silent capture does is it, it'll allow me to enter in all of the notes in my sequence in the note order I want. Now, when I hit the play button here, silent capture is going to uncheck itself. Latch mode is going to stay on, but the mode is going to automatically change to transpose. And you know what, let's use a different variation in octave. We'll just use variation one, octave one. Does it sound a little different? And that's because in the keyboard mode, I still have this transposing to A minor, but I'm now in E minor. So let's change the key to E minor. There we go. Now, because I have transpose mode on, I can simply play different notes on the keyboard to transpose this pattern up or down. And because we're using the keyboard to scale quantize the arpeggio, it'll always stay in the key of E minor. Now, the problem I have with the keyboard here is that it doesn't always transpose correctly. 
like the chords that I want to use are much different than than what it's giving me when I just play one note to shift the whole thing up or down. So what I'll often do is I'll just turn this off by going back to chromatic. Chromatic just means all 12 notes or all notes on the keyboard. So what I can do is I can go through and I can create these patterns one by one, and I can use the drag and drop MIDI function to add these into my composition. So let's say I want this one a few times, and then let's say I want to jump down to a different chord. I can just click clear. I can keep as played mode on. I can turn on silent capture, and I can play in a new pattern. Just like so. I don't even need to play it if I don't want to. I can just drop it down in there, and let's repeat that. And then let's play another chord, so I'll hit clear. I can drag and drop that in. I can join all of those together with J, open this up, and you can see here's the first pattern, here's the second pattern, and then here's the third pattern. And the thing about as played mode is you really can't use this with the uh, record MIDI to track feature because what happens is when you hit record, it actually clears your pattern. So there's really, this is the only way to use this function and get the MIDI in here. There is another way you can do it with capture recording, but it's, it's honestly more trouble than it's worth. So I find that the drag and drop feature is really the easiest way to, to get around this and to work with the as played feature. So really, you know, play around with this. It's an incredible compositional tool if you want to have maybe more tactile control over your compositions and maybe you're not a big fan of working in the step sequencer or working in the piano roll editor. This allows you to enter in patterns and sequences one by one and then just quickly drag and drop them into your project. Okay, so those are the more advanced latch and live playback features and the arpeggiator in Logic Pro. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.